Hello, I am Dr. Hussain Iqbal. I am an orthodontist and dentofacial orthopedist. I also specialize in smile design and implantology. I have been working with Cosmodent India, Bangalore, Gurgaon and Delhi. Well, let's start looking at implants broadly first. Now the implants can be classified on two bases. They can be conventional implants or a two-piece implant system or they can be a single piece system or strategic implants or basal implants or immediate implants as they call it. So these conventional implants are implants which have two pieces ultimately that form a system on which the tooth can be replaced. The major or the most important part of the system is the implant body, the implant fixture that goes inside the bone and it is submerged inside the bone. The second part of the system is called the abutment that connects the submerged part that is the implant body to the crown that is the prosthesis. So the abutment is the second part of the system. That is why it's called a two-piece system, the conventional implant. Usually a conventional implant takes around three to six months to unite or as we call it to osseointegrate with the bone. In this period of three to six months, there is new bone that deposits around the thread of the implants and starts accepting the implant fixture as its own. The body starts accepting it. Otherwise, the body has complete rights to reject it also. So the time taken by this conventional implant is in the range of around three to six months for it to form a strong, good bond with the body, with the bone. The second type of implant systems are called single piece systems or basal implants or bicortical implants. They are also called immediate loading implants. Some call it strategic implants. So what are they? Now basal implants are implants that usually goes and sticks to or gets adhered to a very strong part of the bone that is the cortical bone. On the contrary, the conventional implants, the implant fixtures gets embedded in a soft bone, a trabecular pattern of bone. But the basal implants, they get submerged or embedded in a very hard part of the bone, that is the cortical bone. And usually, more often than not, it engages around two or three cortices. That is why it's called a bicortical implant or many a times tricortical implant also. Not so often, but yes. Because of the engagement of this implant in hard bone, it brings a lot of stability to this implant and that is why they are also called immediate loading implants. That means after having fixed the implant in the bone, it is strong enough to take the load of a prosthesis on it. So immediately, a prosthesis that is a crown or a bridge can be placed on the implant. That is why they are called immediate loading implants. The other name for these implants is a single piece implant system. As the name suggests that the entire implant system, it's in one piece. The part that goes inside the bone and the abutment that used to be a separate body in the conventional is a part of the implant system here. So the abutment and the implant, they are one single unit. That is the design feature of basal implants. Third feature is that usually when basal implants are placed, they are more in number and there needs to be a cross arch stabilization. That means the prosthesis which is designed for basal implants has to be or usually is a continuous bridge that connects all the implants together for a better retention, for a good stability of all the implants in the mouth. The cross arch stabilization gives the basal implants an edge over the conventional implants as they can be formed in one strong unit and the chances of failures reduces. One more feature of basal implants are that they are quite long. The length of the basal implants are usually longer than the conventional implants. This is because the kind of the hard bone that the basal implants are supposed to engage are found at deeper levels inside the jaws. 
so that is why the design feature of basal implants suggests that they be long and the distal most part that is the end part of the implant engages the hardest bone also these implants are smooth surfaced there are different designs in basal implants also but most of the basal implants are smooth surfaced so that they can go through different layers of bone trabecular bone or be it sinus and only the last part of the implant engages the hardest bone that is the cortical bone because of the design features and because of the way they function basal implants have a lot of advantages also over conventional implants the first advantage being that they can be used in areas of less bone or minimal bone areas of attrited jaws so as a conventional implant is supposed to go in trabecular bone in soft bone in absence of those kind of bone patients are left unattended unaddressed and that has led to the basal implants coming into the picture and helping those patients get a prosthesis get a good rehabilitation the second advantage is that they can be used in different areas of the face that is the anchorage or the fixation can be established or attained by different hard bones in the face not just the mouth so they can take support from the zygoma that is the zygomatic bone they can even take support from the orbit they can take support from the pterygoids so all the areas of the face where there is a hard cortical bone present those areas are suitable for the basal implants to engage there and the abutment aspect of the implant can be used in the mouth in severe cases where there is hardly any bone inside the mouth and still those patients can have the privilege of a prosthesis having taken support from different areas of the face the third advantage one of the most important advantage is that basal implants can be loaded immediately now in today's time time is very important no one wants to wait for long for anything so the same thing is for the jaws also for the oral rehabilitation also when basal implants are placed within 2 to 3 days we can give permanent fixed teeth to the patients this is not the case with the help of conventional implants you can't do that so that is where basal implants have an edge over the conventional implants the fourth advantage is that the basal implants are a single body system as we discussed earlier the design feature so it's easy to place there are not so many components that one has to be worried about and also there is no marginal discrepancy between a certain component and the other component between the fixture and the abutment so it's a continuous unit and the placement the manipulation everything becomes quite easy comparatively though it is technique sensitive there are certain disciplines one has to abide by in the placement of basal implants but otherwise when you consider the components and the design features it's quite easy in terms of the design one more design feature of basal implants leads to an advantage and that advantage is loss of or absence of periimplantitis so there is less incidence of periimplantitis with the help of basal implants when you compare it with the conventional implants as most of the implant body is smooth surfaced or in cases of kos implants which is a rough surface implant the neck is smooth surfaced which is going through the gums and also the first few threads of the implants are smooth surfaced therefore the chances of the prevalence of and the incidence of periimplantitis is minimal when it comes to basal implants when you compare it with the conventional implants